Welcome to the 19th lecture in Abstract Algebra. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include cosets, Lagrange's theorem, direct products, and the fundamental theorem of finitely generated abelian groups. Okay, so we'll start with the first exercise from the previous lecture and we'll prove it as a lemma. So let G be a group. Let x be an element in the group, and let a be a non-empty subset. of the group G, then the set of conjugations of the elements in A by X is equal to the set A if and only if the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set A on the left by X is equal to the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set A on the right by X. Now here I'm using the language and notation of a multiplicative group but this is true of an additive group as well. So proof. Suppose that the set of conjugations of the set A is equal to the set A. Then every element in the set of conjugations is also an element in the set A. And conversely, every element in the set A can be expressed as uh, a product x times that an element in the set A times x inverse. And so for every element A in the set A, there corresponds exactly one element B in the set A such that B is equal to x times a times x inverse. Now since b is equal to x times a times x inverse if and only if b times x is equal to x times a, we have that for every element a in the set a, there corresponds exactly one element b and the set a such that x times a is the same as b times x. And hence the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set a on the left by x is the same as the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set a on the right by x. So conversely Suppose that the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set A on the left by X is the same as the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set A on the right by X. Then for every element A in the set A, there corresponds exactly one element b in the set a such that x times a is the same as b times x. Now since x times a is the same as b times x if and only if b is equal to x times a times x inverse, we have that for every element a in the set a there corresponds exactly one element B in the set A such that B is equal to X times A times X inverse and hence the set A is equal to the set of conjugations of the set A of the elements in the set A by the element X So new definition, let H be a subgroup of G and let G be an element in the group. 
the subset, which we denote this way, which is the set obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set H on the left by the element G. This subset of the group is the left coset of the subgroup H containing the element G and the subset, which we denote this way, which is the group obtained by multiplying each of the elements in the set H on the right by the element G, is the right coset. of the subgroup H containing the element G. Now again, I'm using the language and notation of a multiplicative group, but this definition holds for an additive group as well. So notice that if the group G is abelian, then for every element h in the subgroup h we have that g times h is the same as h times g, and so the left and right cosets of the subgroup h containing the element G coincide, and this is true for every element G in the group G, and so uh, if the group is abelian, then the left and right cosets of a subgroup coincide. Now we can make a stronger uh, statement than this, and we'll state this as a theorem. H is a normal subgroup of the group G, if and only if, for every element G in the set G, the left coset of H containing G is the same as the right coset of H containing G. That is, H is a normal subgroup of G, if and only if, the left and right cosets coincide. So proof. Suppose that H is a normal subgroup of G, then the normalizer of H and G is the entire group, and so the set of conjugations of the set H by the element G is equal to H for every element G in the set G. Now by the previous theorem, or rather the previous lemma, we have that the left coset of H is equal to the right coset of H for every element G in the set G. Conversely, suppose that for every element G in the set G, the left coset of H containing G is equal to the right coset of H containing G. Then, by the previous lemma, we have that the set of conjugations or of the elements in H by G is equal to H for every element G in the set G. And so the normalizer of H and G is the entire group. And hence H is a normal subgroup of G. 
Okay, so now let's look at some examples, finding the uh, cosets of a given subgroup. So first we will find the left cosets of the subgroup three z of the integers. Now notice that since the integers under addition is a Boolean, the left and right cosets of the subgroup 3z coincide so we look at the left coset containing the identity 0 this is the same as the subgroup 3z which is the set of integers containing the multiples of 3 Now if we look at the left coset of 3z containing 1, this is the set containing the elements negative 8, negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7, 10, and so on. If we look at the left coset of the subgroup 3z containing the element 2 and this is the set containing negative 7, negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, 8, 11, and so on. So notice that the left coset containing the identity 0 is the same as the left coset containing the number negative 9, negative 6, 9, 6, and so on. The left coset containing 1 is the same as the left coset containing negative 2, 7, 10, and so on. And the left coset containing the number 2 is the same as the left coset containing the number negative 7, 5, 11, and so on. Notice that the uh, union of these three sets is the entire set of integers and that each of these sets are pairwise disjoint and so notice that the set containing the uh, cosets, the left coset containing 0, the left coset containing 1, and the left coset containing 2 is a partition of the entire set of integers. So let's look at another example. We will find the left cosets of the subgroup the cyclic subgroup generated by the element i of the set of quaternion units. Now, the left coset containing the number 1 is the same as the cyclic subgroup generated by i, which is plus or minus 1, plus or minus i. The left coset containing the element j is the set containing plus or minus j, plus or minus j times i, which is the set containing plus or minus j, plus or minus k. So notice that the left coset containing j is the same as the left coset containing k. Notice once again these sets are mutually disjoint and the union of these sets 
is the entire set of quaternion units. And so the set containing the left coset containing 1 and the left coset containing J of the cyclic subgroup generated by I is a partition of the set of quaternion units. Notice also that the left and right cosets coincide and so the cyclic subgroup generated by I is a normal subgroup of the quaternion units under multiplication. So let H be a subgroup of a group G and let G be an element in the group G. Notice that for every pair of elements H and K in the subgroup H, G times H is the same as G times K if and only if H is equal to K. And so the number of elements in the subgroup H is the same as the number of elements in, in the left coset of H containing G. And similarly, the number of elements in the subgroup H is the same as the number of elements in the right coset of H containing G. Okay, so next we'll prove Lagrange's theorem. And this is named in honor of the French mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. So let H be a subgroup of a finite group G. Then the order of the subgroup H divides the order of the group G. So proof. Let the order of G be in and let the order of the subgroup H be M, then every left coset of H contains M elements so let R be the number of distinct left cosets of the subgroup H that partition the group G then the order of G which is n is equal to R times the number of elements in any uh, any one of the left cosets of the subgroup H. And so M divides N. That is the order of the subgroup H divides the order of the group G.